Hello guys, my name is Willem and welcome to LR DX Cars. Like I told you in the last video, I was at the Ferrari Museum in Modena. Now here in the second part of the museum here in Maranello. Like you can see a beautiful Ferrari 250 LM behind me and the, even the body of it. Real cool and yeah, I will uh, show you around here in the beautiful museum here at Ferrari in Maranello. All the cars that are here, a bit of the history. Yeah, enjoy watching and if you haven't seen the last video at the Ferrari Museum in Modena. Please also go check that out and leave a like and subscribe on the channel for a lot more cool supercar videos to come. And yeah, today it's all about Ferrari. Enjoy watching. Like I was saying to you, the 1963 Ferrari 250 LM. We already saw a red one at the other museum in Modena. But yeah, I think this one is even cooler because I think it's a real race car with the French flag underneath it. I think it's a sort of Tour de France edition of something. Cool fabric seats inside, cool as the quilting. On the rear wall, it's real cool. I really like it. Well, it always does it. Small steering wheel, sequential gearbox, really nice to look at. Fuel filler cap, and some cool air intakes that will go to the engine in the center. Real nice car, this one. It says that the car has raced at the mall, I think. Yeah, that's how it really looks like. And then you see also the chassis of the car. It's an aluminum body, it says. Will probably be not that heavy, very light, I think. Even very light body, you can see really all the panels shaped almost the same. Really cool, and then a lot of history. I'm not gonna go too deep in everything, but yeah, if you are here in Marana, please come check it out. I think it will also change a lot here. Yeah, and this is one of my favorite modern Ferraris. At the moment, the 812 GTS. We also saw a lot driving, a lot of them driving at the Mille Miglia, the first part of the Mille Miglia. I also have a full video of that, of that, of the 2022 Mille Miglia. So yeah, go check that video also out. There were also a lot of modern Ferraris that started the race, and yeah, then all the cars from 1927 and 1957 also joined the beautiful Mille Miglia Rally. It was, I think, about two videos ago. Yeah, this 812 GDS, the V12 in the front, 800 horsepower, also all the cool carbon fiber details like the diffuser, the rear bumper, special design of wheels for the GDS, cool racing seats on the inside, all carbon fiber also, real cool air outlets, really nice long nose. Yeah, we will miss the V12 Ferraris in the future. Now you also have the race version, the Company Journey, maybe we will also see that one here. Yeah. Really a dream car, this one. And then next to it is the body also. I think this is a, maybe also an aluminum body, I think, or another. It doesn't say it, just the chassis and body shell, it says. Yeah, like you see, if you compare it with that car, now there is a lot more going on. A lot more welding, a lot more places with all the cabling and all the electricity and everything. Because, yeah, that time there was no... Yeah, not much electricity in the car. Yeah, now you see everything has to be a bit more safe and everything. All the bumpers to, to stop it when you have a crash. That's not how the whole car uh, gets cracked. And then very cool is, I wanted to tell to you, is when you have the Scuderia Ferrari shield on your Ferrari, like you see on this one, they 
leave a place open to put the plaque. But yeah, sometimes you see on the Ferraris also the painted shields. It's a bit bigger. So yeah, then the front panel of the Ferrari is a totally different front panel because yeah, this one would be closed. Yeah, it's a nice detail to share with you guys. Really cool. Uh, yeah, let's uh, go further here at the Ferrari Museum here in Maranello. Where yeah, we will be greeted with some of the best here. I think they all have the whole big five here of Ferrari, like I was saying to you. In the museum in Modena, we already saw the Ferrari F40 that's standing there. Yeah, this F50 thing is even better <laughs> with the V12 in. Naturally aspirated V12, sequential gearbox, like how we like it, six speed manual. Really cool, this car is, even has some yellow detailing on the inside that you don't see that much at all. Normally it's just a black leather. Like cool, this one in the Giallo Modena. You don't see them that much at all in this color. The sound that will come out of this car, I think would be from another planet. Yeah, I, uh, it also is one of my dream cars it's from 1995, 520 horsepower back then from the V12. 0 to 60, 3.8 seconds and a top speed of 325 kilometers an hour. Yeah, for a car of that age isn't that bad at all. Really cool look to it. Yeah, it was, uh, like I was saying, a dream car of mine. I also have a little model car of it. Cool car on fiber in. Yeah, like you see, not that much going on. Some air intakes here to cool the massive V12 engine. And yeah, the cool thing is about the Ferrari F50 is of course that you can put the roof off, which is quite special. I think this car even now has the hard top on, but yeah, you can also have a fabric top. I think it would be changed a bit here, or maybe this even is a special car. Yeah, that's the cool thing about it. You can listen to the beautiful V12 with the roof off, which is quite cool. Then we have I think the very first of the special Ferraris, the 288 GDO. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's the most rare of them all. Because that one, the F40 are about 1200 cars. I think the Enzo and the F50 are about 500, just like the La Ferrari. I think this car was only about two, 300 cars. So yeah, this is the most rare one. And yeah, you can also see it in the price. I think this is uh, about 4 million now. From 1984 it says, the V8 with 400 horsepower till 7000 RPMs, 4.9 seconds till 100, and a top speed of 300. Yeah, really cool, the Daytona racing seats, 5 speed manual, I really like it, big V8 here. Yeah, they uh, say that this car is also quite nice to drive, maybe one of the nicest even, because yeah, you still have the interaction with the car now every modern car is a bit yeah with all the electricity all the technology it gets a bit driven by its own but yeah this car you really need to be alert and i think even the car next to it you really need to be awake <laughs> the ferrari f40 i have heard and read a lot of cool stories about this car that yeah really is a bit of a widow maker like they say because yeah, the turbo lag, the turbo kicks in a bit later and yeah, you get a bit surprised of it <laughs> when uh, you're driving and you give a bit of throttle and you need to wait, hey, where, where is the gas, uh, the car doesn't uh, go at all, you give more gas and then, then the boost comes and you need to focus on the car. This is from 1987, 4.1 seconds it says, 0 to 60, 0 to 100, 478 horsepower on the beautiful V8. Twin turbocharge of the B turbocharge, even says V8, 324 kilometers an hour. What a car this one. Yeah, if you had to choose the 288 GDO, the F40, the F50, it would probably be a very hard one. I think we even have the beautiful Angel here of the Ferrari F50. Big V12, nicely presented here. Always cool to take a closer look. Even the gearbox, you can see. Real nice. And yeah, we'll continue. I think you will probably know what the next car coming is. Is this the Ferrari Enzo? The next one in line of the Ferrari Big Five. The hypercars from Ferrari. And yeah, in the last video we were at the home of Enzo Ferrari, the founder of the 
have one of the best supercar companies, I think, in the world. And yeah, this is a bit of a named after him to honor him. It's real cool. This one, I think it's from 2002, it says. Also with the V12 in that produces, I think, 660 horsepower. Top speed of more than 350 kilometers an hour and 3.6 seconds to 100. Yeah, quite a nuts car, this one. And yeah, it was just before everything got a bit more safe and uh, yeah, more electricity in the car, more safety system. Yeah, you had some safety systems on this car, but yeah, it was really still a car. <laughs> Yeah, the real driver's car, like they say, it's very basic interior. Yeah, the coolest thing to look at is there they have it in full glory, the beautiful V12 engine, of course. Great sound will come out of this car. You can see even the very big diffuser with the carbon fiber fins in it. Running, maybe get a bit down for you guys, running over the whole length underneath the car. For the downforce underneath the car, the airflow that, yeah, like see the car does not have a spoiler or anything because yeah the Ferraris really go for the more classy design really elegant design and that's why they have also a lot of aerodynamics going on underneath the car yeah, I think it's very smart of them to think about it the car really stays planted on the road and yeah I said the car does not have a spoiler but maybe if I'm wrong or not I think maybe this part will maybe, maybe come up a bit I'm not sure on this one. And then the beautiful two lights. Like, yeah, we see now on the F8 and on the 430, they had it to design. It really comes back in the design language of Ferrari. Really cool, this one. Like, all the hypercars, like you had on the F50 and the F40, you can put the whole rear up. Or so it is, I think, on this car. Like that. And also the front will move in one big panel. Of course, it's to save weight. And that you have, yeah one big panel and very light panel does not weigh that much also a full carbon fiber body this car has and then something special is the other cars did not have it this car also has the wing doors which is quite cool very special that uh, nice feature on your supercar hypercar to have it and some air outlets to cool the front wheel arches of course and a big air intake to that massive engine that is placed right here We'll take a close look for you guys. Yeah, like I said, 660 horsepower out of this 12 cylinder. And yeah, really a <laughs> piece of art to look at. It'd be nice to have a coffee table like this. <laughs> really cool. A lot going on there. You can even see a bit on the inside of the cylinders. Real nice. Crazy cool car. Nice carbon fiber finishes. That's how they always do it on the more special series of Ferraris. And then the last, most modern of the big five, I think. Maybe next year or the year after, they will be replacing also the Ferrari, La Ferrari. So it's uh, quite cool to, uh, to have another cool hypercar coming in the future. And then this one was also the first hybrid for Ferrari. Yeah, you couldn't really drive hybrid in it, but yeah, they used the battery on this car. So you had the 800 horsepower V12 in it, and you also have a high curve system. It comes a bit from the Scuderia Ferrari, from the Formula One technology, that you have another 160 horsepower on top of that. So yeah, if you combine them, you 963 almost thousand horsepower out of this monster. The V12 have still 9,000 RPMs. <laughs> and yeah, for everybody that has ever heard a La Ferrari or an Enzo even, the V12 in that. And those cars really are, yeah, to, to dream of it really is Pavarotti music in my ears. <laughs> like they say it, yeah, three, under three seconds, I think, this car, 2.9 maybe, through to 60, which is quite fast for only a rear wheel driven car. Yeah, and more than 350 kilometers an hour. I saw a video on Instagram, probably a lot of you have seen also, a guy on the Autobahn. I think he was driving about 370, 380 in this car, which is <laughs> crazy nuts. Also cool is that you also have the wing doors on this car, but not like on the regular. And so you had it that you just pull it like gold wing doors. This one are more like butterfly doors like you have on a McLaren or something. Yeah, really cool design this one. 
Now he calls to the Enzo. They have a very low, small line over the car for the airflow. A very big radiator in the front, of course. A lot of cooling, cool carbon fiber front lip and everything. Then I think a bit F1 inspired is this nose that it really comes out a bit at one point. Really sticks out, which is quite cool. The big air intakes underneath. Of course, center lock wheels, yeah. Because, yeah, you want to take this car on the track, of course, that you can easily replace the tires. Crazy cool. Nice carbon fiber side skirt and everything. And cool is this very big air outlet to cool the front wheel arches and the brakes, which is cool. Also, when you open up the door, this whole part opens up. It's quite nice. And also cool is the mirror design of this LaFerrari but also the carbon fiber finish to it. Very cool. On the Aperta version they even have another design of things then they are more flattened. These are all going a bit upward. The Aperta is the, or the spider version of this LaFerrari. They also made some of them. They are I think even more rare than this one. But yeah. Just to take a closer look is really something else, guys. All the active aero parts that move, depending how you're driving, how you're taking a corner, that the panels will yeah, help the car keep traction on the road. Because yeah, it's a rear-wheel driven car. You can see some of the curves, wiring in, the electricity, then the fog light of the F1, it's always cool. You see two big exhausts on each side, and yeah, then the very beautiful, like you can see, V12 engine. Real lovely engine, this one. And next to it is another <laughs> very badass looking car, I think, really mean looking, in full black. This is the, I think, the FX6K Evo. It's only a track car. It's for the Corse Cliente, for the special Ferrari customers. That will probably have a collection where a LaFerrari or an Enzio is in. They get the chance, or if they want to race the, in the Corsi Cliente and also Corsa races of Ferrari, they can uh, yeah, ask or be on the list or maybe get asked to buy one of these puppies. And yeah, <laughs> like you can see it really is. We just took a close look at the Geiger La Ferrari, but yeah, when you even take a look at this, it's a totally different car. <laughs> Very aggressive. Spoiler also, which is open to create some active aero. The, the fuser is pretty <laughs> from a Le Mans race car, I think. Very big diffuser, but even a sort of spoiler here that's open. And a very big race exhaust, probably an Inconel system of race exhaust, and also the fog light. And all the fins here, all the cool shark fins. Very, very aggressive looking car, this one. Probably all the cars in carbon fiber, like you can see. Yeah. Some panels are painted, of course, just like the LaFerrari and the Enzo as a full carbon fiber car. And then very cool is, I think, this fin in the middle. Now you also have it on the Huracan STO and for some other cars, but yeah, it's really cool, the fin with extra levels in to really keep the air flowing underneath the car, overneath. Even here, some very big air intakes. Real nice, this one. And yeah, like you can see, fully race packed with the race steering wheel in, the full racing seats and everything. Center lock wheels, very cool. And I'm just gonna read 1050 horsepower, it says, from this V12. So, yeah, almost like 100 more than in the standard. And yeah, I think a lot of weight saving also in this car. Cool racing wheels, even. Very nice. Really like it. I think it's the first time for me to see the, an Evo car. And, uh, normally, we'd only see them on track. Easy to look at, cool carbon fiber mirrors and everything, and then this this matte black color really is mean. I think it would be crazy to race in this car. I think this is also the engine, like you can see for the LaFerrari. Like you can see the big V12. I think it's the 6.3 liter, if I'm not wrong, V12. And then you can see the curve system behind it. I think it's the technology that comes, of course from the Formula 1 and uh, the, it's better also for the emissions and of course also to give the extra boost when pulling up of course 
to get an extra boost. That's why the car yeah, really pulls so fast on the three seconds from zero to 100. It's crazy fast for a rear wheel driven car. So yeah, that's what the car system does. And maybe also some extra boost when you're on the track. Maybe you also have a button to push when you maybe are overtaking or something. It's really cool. Yeah, really nice to share this. Very cool engine. To see it more close. Yeah, the FXK Evo, probably the fastest car to take on a track. Nice toke. Really cool, this one. Really like it. And if we continue the tour, we have this cool sort of atelier look here where this beautiful Ferrari after our PDF is parked. And yeah, like you can see, it also has a special livery to it, sort of heritage inspired racing livery. I will go uh, show that car more in detail for you. Hope you're enjoying here at the Ferrari Museum in Modena. Enjoy! Yeah, the Ferrari F12 TDF, based on the Ferrari F12, like the name says, but then the more hardcore racing version of it. This predecessor was the 599 GDO, and now you also have the A12 Company Journey, which are all the race versions of the more GT V12 placed in the front road car. And yeah, now they have more of a bit of a track car inspired. Yeah, it's of course also a car for the road, but yeah, they always make them a lot lighter, give them extra horsepower. I think this car also even has a roll cage, a full four-point racing belts and everything, which is quite cool. Cool red, I think sort of fabric interior, which is also quite special. I think this car is based maybe on another race car of the future. It says Henri Co. Frank Schalk is maybe a yeah, uh, delivery for him. And then like I told you, just on the A12 GDS, that this car has not the standard Scudera shields. Now you see they are fully painted. They are even painted by hand, which is quite cool. Maybe also the racing stripe and the dot on the door. Then the cool yellow, or the cool yellow, the gold wheel design, which is quite cool. And then nice carbon fiber, everything. The side skirt, front lip. Something I really like is these flares here. On the front nose, very cool. And you see some air intakes to cool the big V12. I think this car has 770 horsepower if I'm not wrong. 780, it says still 8500 RPMs it revs. And a top speed of over 340 kilometers an hour. Another cool thing the F12 TDF has is, maybe zoom in a bit for you, that the air can actually float on the side of the car here. It will go in and go out here on this side to create more grip of course on the front to keep really the front tires on the road and I think these are very very big 275 35 front tires yeah because the car really needed it because uh, yeah it was very fast and I think also the first time they used the rear wheel steering on the F12 TDF which is also quite cool that car turns in sharper at the track also for in the city it's yeah, easier to use Real cool car, this one only 799 of them worldwide. And then, like I said, sort of atelier look here. It is quite, quite cool. All the ladders, all the Alcantaras, the steering wheels, really nice. We really love the Coyo ladder. This is very special, it's a prototype, the P80C, it says. I think it's only a car for track use. Maybe read a bit about it, it's from 2019. V8 in it, but yeah, they don't say too much about it. And yeah, very special is here to look at it in person. <laughs> the cool spoiler it has there, <laughs> it is quite nuts. Whoa, <laughs> and then if you come here on the back, see this massive, massive diffuser. 
Well, guys, we also have Lamont and get the fuser. Maybe go stand here to see it a bit. <laughs> the fuser comes out very, very long. It's cool, slick tires on there. Because, yeah, it's a track car. Also, the side skirt is very big. You can see where the air can float. Cool air intakes here. Cool the V8, of course. You can't see that much on the inside. Cool is the carbon fiber finishes. I think this is the prototype model that is standing here. Yeah, very cool. Special design to it. The back is fully open like you can see. All the, all the hot air can float out. Cool is the design of the exhausts even. Really special car this one. Never seen it before. Probably won't see it ever again. And cool here also in the front. It's a very big front nose. Sort of diffuser here on the front. Really like in a race car. Yeah, to Really stabilize the car at the front, give all the grip. We plant it on the road. <laughs> you see the cavalinos really uh, hanging here a bit. Quite cool. Also the straps to keep the diffuser in place. All the downforce, all the G-forces. It all go through. Feel special to see the AC. If you continue the walk here, we have a beautiful Ferrari Mondial Cabriolet here. Cool four-seater Ferrari. Cool V8, I think, in the back. Well, still good look to it. Maybe even a V6 in it, not sure on this car. Nice sequential gearbox. And a cool project car, I think. Is this with, with the 458 lights on it? Cool wrap that you yeah, can't see it that, that much like in a prototype car in it. Maybe it was the prototype for the La Ferrari or anything, or maybe for the coming Ferrari. Yeah guys, I was right. This is the prototype of the La Ferrari. I read a bit about it. Quite cool to see it in person. Maybe also the FXX Evo car. Very cool. With all the flicks on the big spoiler. Like you can see they even used the roof scoop. Maybe sad that they didn't brought it to the real production car, but yeah. Quite cool to look at all the air outlets, the radiators on top. And yeah, the test cars of Ferrari really mean a lot for them. For of course testing the engine of course and all the components for in the road car. So nice to see. Yeah, we'll continue the tour here. We also have the Fiorano race track, the Pista di Fiorano. Maybe we'll also see that. We come here in the known room where all the known Formula One cars are. Here you even have all a lot of the trophies they won, all the championships. You can see the Ascari Fangio, that's a very known one. Fangio, I saw the film of him, it's quite cool too. Yeah, he really was a badass. Then Houthorn, Hill, Lauda, Schumacher, of course. Yeah, like, see a lot of trophies. We have here, and quite cool is also all the model cars of all the race cars from back in the day. You can see where it started, 36, even the Alfa Romeo. And it's, yeah, I think with the 125 we saw in the museum in Modena. It was the very first car to actually get the name Ferrari. At first they raced Alfa Romeo by Scuderia Ferrari. And it's cool to see how the cars have developed through the years. Quite nice to take a closer look at. Also like uh, model cars myself. So yeah, it's uh, cool to share with you. You, you see, there they were more, yeah, almost car cars. And here was when the safety was <laughs> coming a bit into the Formula One. Really cool, these cars. And yeah, 
Now we can actually go see them in person because yeah, we are here at the museum in Modena or in Maranello even. This is the F1 from 1980 it says. Quite cool. As you can see there wasn't that much going on in that age. Probably quite dangerous even to drive. So cool. All the aluminium panels. Quite nice this one. Maybe read a bit about it. So who drove the car? It's uh, Charles Gilles Villeneuve. Maybe some of you will know. I have heard the name before. Has won a Monaco GP in this car. And we'll go further. This is a 1996 Ferrari car. For Scuderia Ferrari. It was driven by Eddie Irvin, the German. And it had some winnings in the Spanish, Belgian and Italian Grand Prix. Yeah, you can see some extra air intakes on this car. If you compare it with that one, yeah, the car got a bit more sharper in the front, a bit more aerodynamics going on. And if we go further to the 1999 car, they called the F399, that was the F310. For the people who like to know it, big V10 in this one. Those to also use a V10, I think that car used the V6 even, that old one. Quite cool. 790 horsepower this one. 16,300 RPM, 16,000 RPM guys. <laughs> Crazy nuts. Yeah, and like see some other changes, developments going on through the years, what can be better. Then the 2000 car, the F1 2000. Also with a big V10 and of course this car even went through 17,000 RPM so even more than that one and a cool thing I can immediately see is that they have maybe zoom in a bit for you guys they have some air scoops here to cool the brakes that really the air can directly float to the brakes of course to cool them a lot yeah like see all the cars were using carbon fiber even that car was using some carbon fiber Real nice to see. This car was driven by Schumacher and had nine wins. And even one from Barrichello, it says. 108 points in the year 2000. Really cool, this one. Cool to see then. You go further, the 2001 car. Still the same V10. Yeah. Some small changes I see already on the front. A little on the front bumper. The diffuser in the front, but yeah, that's the, this one is way more going on, way more flicks and everything. Yeah, they always try new things during the, the years, always try to improve, try to make the cars better and faster. This car had 825 horsepower. For the people who want to know it, the, yeah, the car had 9 victories and 11 pole positions by Michael Schumacher, of course. So yeah, he really was the guy in the 2000s. To really go for it yeah, with the Formula One and Scuderia, really, uh, yeah, Ferrari really has a lot of history, a lot of history with him, a lot of trophies won with him. I think about 11 championships they won with Michael Schumacher. So, yeah, it's, it's cool. He's a really, really a legend here in Maranello. Yeah, the 2002 car, still with the V10, still the same. Even the RPMs got a bit higher 17,800 RPMs. This is crazy, guys. <laughs> crazy. 15 wins, it says, out of the 17 races it run. 9, 1, 2 finishes and 10 pole positions this car. And yeah, the driver's title. Yeah, this car really was a... Was a good car, I think. <laughs> 17 races run and yeah, 15 wins. It's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. And then the 2004 car. Continue a bit, a bit more horsepower, 865 horsepower. Then you see on the side, they had some more air fins and everything going on. Also on the rear, you see, yeah, there was nothing on the rear. There they came up with some spoilers. Here they have a lot different even. Always change, always make more flex on the car to really improve the airflow over the car. A lot of, yeah. Development in the air tunnel, of course. Then the 2007 car. This um, car was driven by 
Schumacher it says, and the newcomer in that time in 2006, or yeah, this car is from 2007, was Kimi Raikkonen. Oh, yeah, it's quite cool. Still the V10 at 620 horsepower. Oh, I'm wrong, V8, sorry. I think from the 2004 to the 2007, between that age, the, yeah, the emissions and everything was getting a bit more strict, and yeah, the cars really need to yeah, be, um, be a bit more efficient and everything, and the fuel consumption needs to be better and everything. Yeah, it's a bit sad. <laughs> now they even have the V6 in the Ferrari, but yeah, the V10 sound of those cars back in the days that Schumacher drove. If you watch those videos again and hear the car <laughs> rev to 16, 17,000 RPMs, yeah, talking about it, I will already get uh, goosebumps. Uh, yeah, it's crazy. Uh, it's crazy, these cars. Really uh, awesome history that you have, and the guy, Marcus Schumacher, really a hero, really a uh, um, guy to look up for. He uh, always uh, believed in it, always went for it, always stayed positive, always stayed grinding. And yeah, that's what a hustler does. <laughs> that's how you get somewhere. That's how you win seven world titles and are probably the most known Formula One driver in the recent years. Yeah, quite cool. Also some engines they have here on display, yeah, like you can see. In the other museum in Modena, we saw some regular V12 and V8 engines that they use in production cars. But yeah, if you compare it with these engines, these are way smaller, of course, to save a lot of weight, of course. Yeah, it's crazy cool. It's a V10 from 2002. It was also a V10, that one from 2001. Continued 2003. The V10 and then the V8, of course, from 2007. That V8 even went to 19,000 RPMs, it says. Crazy, guys. <laughs> That's crazy. The sound uh, will be immense. Yeah, special to see them. A lot more engineering going on here. To make everything compact and yeah, really is a racing engine. Very cool to see. Never seen one in person. Yeah, it's very nice to stand here. I'm a bit of a Formula One fan myself. I don't watch all the games, of course. It was yeah, in the last years with Lewis Hamilton always winning. It was a bit boring, I think. But yeah. It's normal, I think, in the time of Schumacher, it was maybe also a bit boring that he won all the races and, uh, and yeah, he was uh, most of the time on the podium. Yeah, it's cool that uh, now, this year in 2022, you see uh, Charles Leclerc and Carlos Sainz uh, with the Scuderia Ferrari is doing yeah, a bit better than the last years, because uh, the last years they weren't really competing in for the championship. And now, uh, yeah, they already won some races. They have, uh, I think they are now the second on the construction title and or even on the driver's title even uh, maybe if Verstappen is now even in front but yeah I hope uh, that Scuderia Ferrari uh, maybe even get a win this year because yeah it's been some time and yeah they are the most known brand of course in the Formula One everybody loves uh, Ferrari I think everybody likes to see them win and I really uh, I would really like to see it uh, myself that they can add a trophy to this big hall and yeah, um, good luck to Charles Leclerc. I saw him even driving in Monaco. So yeah, if you haven't seen the Monaco videos, <laughs> go check those out and you can see him driving in his Ferrari 48 Pista Spider, which is quite cool, the matte black one. We will continue the tour. Like you can see, I'm here in front of the big museum in Maranello. You can't miss it if you're nearby. Really come check it out. It's really cool to see the Formula One history and all the special cars, the Ferrari Big Five. You wouldn't see it uh, all together, probably uh, even ever in your life. So yeah, cool. Then we have here some old Formula One racing cars. The history I'll also show it to you in more detail. Very cool, these ones. This is the very first Ferrari, the Ferrari 125 Sport. We also saw it at the museum in Modena. Now, yeah, we can even see it in person. I think there was only a picture of that car and the engine we saw. It was a very long and tight engine. 
Very cool, this one, V12, 118 horsepower. Quite nice, very big air intake in the front. Cool wheels, car you can sit in with two. Yeah, it still looks like a beautiful classic, but in that day, yeah, it was a, really a racing car. Very cool, this one. I really love to drive in it. Quite nice. Then we have the Ferrari 240, it says MM. Never heard of that one. And a very beautiful color. Nice spec, this one with the white underside and the more lighter blue upper sides. I think this will be a very, very special one. Maybe read a bit about it. The one that was built for the Millimedia 1953. I went to the Millimedia this year, so yeah, if you haven't seen the video, Please go check it out. <laughs> that car already drove 280 kilometers an hour, which is crazy fast for a car of 1953. Yeah, it was, uh, it was very nice. It says um, that the driver Giannino Marzotto won the Bagheta version, won in the Bagheta version, the, yeah, the Milimigla. And uh, he was driving an average speed of 142 kilometers an hour in that car on the Milimigla guys. That's crazy. We saw some of them driving on all the twisty roads through all the villages and everything <laughs> on an average of 142 kilometers an hour, guys. <laughs> it's, uh, that's nuts. He really got some balls, that Italian guy. <laughs> really, uh, yeah, really is here, I think, to do it in that time, drive so fast. Quite nice. And it says the F1 driver Alberto Ascari also had some air contribution in the development of this car. But yeah, it's a real stunning looking car, I think. I think this is even the plaque of the Carbozeria Superleggera, so not designed by Pininfarina, but by Superleggera. Really nice are these air outlets. It's really art, I think, guys. The beautiful silver line that separates the two colors. The beautiful air intake here. Here also some air outlets. Yeah, it's really art. I would uh, place a car like this in my living room and just look at it for the whole day. <laughs> Let's check all the cool details. Cool is that here the wheel arches are open, of course, to cool them. Like you will probably know, even a trunk, I think it is, which is quite handy. And the Ferrari 750 Monza. Yeah, now we know where all the newer Ferrari Monzas are based on. Like, you know, the newer Monza is also a car without a roof. You can choose between the SP1 or the SP2, which is quite cool. This car even uses a four-cylinder line engine, which you don't hear that much at all with Ferrari. Maybe in the future they will be needing to go that way again with the all the engines getting smaller and smaller for the emissions. But yeah, they put 260 horsepower out of this car in 1954, which is quite nice. And then, yeah, top speed of 265 kilometers an hour, which is very fast, I think. And uh, it won the Italian Championship and the World Sports Car Championship races, it says, in 1954. So yeah, real known race car, this one. Real cool history to it. And yeah, like you can see the, the hump on the back that yeah, now the other Monzas also have. And a bit of the shape that also comes back uh, when you take a look on the interior. It really is the original interior. It's quite cool. Probably this car is kept in full original condition. Yeah, that's the best for the value of the car that they won't have a restoration. Because yeah, if they have a race history, they will be getting worth a lot in the future. Yeah. Very cool. It had driven the Calvacate, it says in 2019, and yeah, probably a lot of other rallies, like it says the Ansel Classic, probably also the Millimigra. So yeah, this car would also be allowed there because it uh, yeah, won some championships. Very cool on this with the exhausts on the side. Very nice. We can even take a big glimpse here to the engine bay. Very lightweight car, of course. Really nice to look at the Einstein Classic. It drove a lot. I think maybe also a rally we need to go check out in the future. Oh, remember. And this is a car I know. It's a bit more from my age. The Ferrari 430 Scuderia. Based on the Ferrari 430. 
neemt after the noon racing hours this video here Ferrari. Yeah, I think this car really is a dream car of mine. Also have a little car model of it. I'll have all the car models of all the cars I want in the future, I think. Nice car, my fiber. Back to it. Yeah, to give it more of a lightweight look. Full diffuser. The standard 430 had more of the two exhausts on the, on the other side, on each side. But yeah, now they've gone for a exhaust straight in the middle. Of course, also to save weight for the scud badge. Really um, is a great sound out of that V8. I think the car produces about 510 horsepower, 320 kilometers an hour. And yeah, like you can see, the four point racing belts, nice roll cage, really stripped down also with the more fabric and Alcantara finish on the inside. Of course, yeah, to save weight because it's lighter. Then you can see the whole door is in carbon fiber, very lightweight doors. Yeah, just to save a lot of weight, ceramic brakes, of course. Nice air outlets, that car. Um, we will see hopefully back on the channel, maybe even drive it in the future. We'd love to. Really cool car, this one. And that car is also a very, very, very special car, I think. The Ferrari 330P4 from 19. 67 with the V12 in the rear, 450 horsepower, 320 kilometers an hour, and 967. <laughs> it's so fast, guys. You, yeah, you wouldn't uh, know now every car, every sports car drives 300 kilometers an hour, but yeah, they have all the safety systems and everything. The car, yeah, you don't even feel it when you drive 300 kilometers an hour, but believe me, if you drive 300 kilometers an hour in this car. <laughs> You will feel it through your bones and everything, I think. You can see to the rear, maybe zoom in a bit for you. You can see the gearbox and the exhaust pipes. Yeah, it's quite nice. Take a closer look at, yeah, a really lightweight car, of course. You can even see the weldings of the pedals. There, yeah, because, yeah, it doesn't need to be beautiful. It was really a race car. Really like how Enzo Ferrari it liked, full race. Inspired, and then what I personally prefer on this car is the front, the front look, the front lights, the flares, and the, the front. Yeah, it's really something else, really beautifully designed. They, uh, <laughs> they always do it at Ferrari. They make a race car, and still it looks uh, crazy good. I think beautiful air intakes, some flicks on the side. A really nice car. This one very low, probably. You can even put two people in it. With the roof, of course, to feel all the air and everything. Really nice on this. Maybe read a bit about it. Mm. Yeah, it would probably have won a lot of races. Uh, just 599 were built. Also cool to share. And now you have another, the SP3, the Daytona model. The Daytona SP3, it's come out last year. It's a bit based on this car. It's a uh, the second car of the more of the historic Ferrari cars. I don't, I don't know how they call it, the historic line of Ferraris that come back now, like they did on the Monza, made the newer version. They also made a newer version of this one. Maybe some other cool projects, even in the future. Who knows what the Ferrari will come out with? But yeah, it's always great what they do. Then some other Formula One cars here. This is an older one from 19. 95 it says, the V12 in, great looking car this one, not that much going on like you have on the newer car, but yeah, still a lot of carbon fiber was used, you can see the carbon fiber wasn't that good looking in that time, yeah, really, still a crazy car to take a closer look at, very big tires, they are even used those tires, it's quite nice, all the structures of the car, take a closer look at. It's really cool. Big air intake here. Cool is this Scuderia badge on the headrest. Really nice. Yeah, it's very tight in there. That's why all the Formula One drivers are very small always. And yeah, don't uh, need to be the <laughs> need to be in shape because yeah, you wouldn't probably fit in there. Those rear tires are really massive. <laughs> really cool. Nice is the diffuser. The very small Scuderia badge that you can see. Very nice. Take a closer look at. Then this is a more newer Formula One car, I think. 
So you can see a lot more going on. If you only take a look here at the front of user, see all the flicks everywhere. Everywhere you look, there is something going on. Really nice this car, even there. And then the nose, like I said, of the LaFerrari was a bit like this. It comes out really cool. The carbon fiber, of course, a full carbon fiber car, this one. Really nice. Take a look at I'm gonna show from go cool. take a look from but here it is 2018 this car with a V6 in it, probably also the V6 hybrid system. Yeah, and if you come here also <laughs> there's even more going on, even bigger rear tires. You said the Formula One cars are rear wheel driven cars, so yeah, they need a lot of grip. Uh, a lot going on here guys. Really cool to see it. More in person. Really like it. What a car. If you could be racing in one of these, <laughs> it's really something else. Nice is the halo system now for the safety of the cars. I think uh, it does not look good, but yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it's better that they have it. All the crashes, you don't want to stay in a crash because, yeah. The cars are really going fast into a car and run into a crash, so yeah, safety is now much better, which is, I think, nice. We don't want to uh, give, uh, lose some good F1 drivers from the big exhaust here in the middle. Crazy to take a look at these cars. Really like it. love to say a very big thanks to all of you for watching hope you enjoyed here a bit of the tour through the museum here in Maranello if you haven't seen the last video I was also at the museum in Modena where there were also a lot of cool Ferrari cars of course and race cars here please also go check that video out if you're a big Ferrari fan and yeah please leave a like also if you're a Ferrari fan like me and yeah, subscribe to the journey because yeah in the coming days I will be doing a lot of other Supercar museums also here in Italy. Like I told you, I was already been to the Mille Miglia here. So yeah, go check that video out. And uh, big thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next video. Bye.